So our next speaker will be uh, Dr. Anna Natuk. Dr. Natuk is an instructor in the Cardiovascular Institute at Stanford University. She received her MD PhD at uh, Favaloro University in Buenos Aires and completed postdoctoral research in Dr. Mercola's lab at Stanford. Her research has focused on developing protective therapies for cardiovascular disease, such as ischemia reperfusion injury and cancer drug toxicity. She has received multiple awards, including recent funding by the NIH K99 R00 Transition to Independence Award. And her talk this morning is titled, Developing Strategies to Protect Against Cardiovascular Toxicity of Oncology Drugs. Please welcome Dr. Natuk. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the, the opportunity to, to present in this meeting and for the kind introduction. So today I will talk about strategies on how we can de develop novel cancer drugs to avoid the cardiovascular toxicity. As it, it is very well known that many of the cancer drugs are associated to substantial amount of side effects and the particular ones that can impact the survival and life quality of the patients are the cardiovascular adverse events. Therefore, it's very important to have new tools that we can use to predict those cardiovascular toxicities of the drugs before the drugs goes to the patient. Uh, therefore, with this in mind, in Dr. Mercola lab during my postdoc, I uh, work on developing a novel high throughput functional cellular assays to be able to um, reproduce, mimic, and evaluate the arrhythmic phenotype, the cardiovascular dysfunction in cardiomyocytes, as well as the vas vascular dysfunction in endothelial and mass muscle cells. And currently, I'm also working in addressing the thrombotic effects with new platelets uh, I functional say in vitro. Um, therefore, um, to be able to uh, evaluate this cardiovascular toxicity of a drug, we uh, need to have a broader approach on how we address this issue. And we, for our uh, pipeline, we will need to include at least multiple uh, cellular lineages that will include cardiomyocytes and vascular cells. However, if you also would like to develop a new cancer drugs to the pipeline, we will need to include a specific cancer cell line that we are developing the drug for. Uh, this is what I call the three-legged stool of cardiovascular safe uh, cancer drug development. And in the next slides, I will show you uh, how we develop this pipeline to strategize and evaluate the cardiovascular dysfunction, as well as how we use this pipeline to, for the drug development. To address the cardiovascular dysfunction in, in a dish, we use um, IPS-derived cardiomyocytes. Um, these cells, as you know, are very, a very good source of, of cardiomyocytes because we can uh, produce them in an unlimited numbers, which gives us advantage respect to the adult cardiomyocytes. We um, take PBMCs or skin fibroblasts from, um, from uh, human donors. We uh, reprogram them into the IPS, and from them, we differentiate them to the cardiomyocytes using the well-known wind modulator uh, protocol. And at the third days of differentiation, we expose them to um, special media, which we call maturation media, that is um, a media that has a, a rich in fatty acids and low in glucose that was previously published by Dr. Mercola Lab. Uh, after four weeks of the treatment with this media, the cardiomyocytes show better contractile function as well as better organization of the sarcomeres. Therefore, we use these more mature cells um, to be able to address this cardiac disease, uh, cardiac manifestation of disease in a dish. We play these cells in 3 d plate format to be able to evaluate multiple uh, drugs, multiple dose ranges, as well as multiple cell lines simultaneously. So how we evaluate the function of these cells in a dish? What we do is we stain these cardiomyocytes with fluorescent membrane and mitochondrial dyes. And we image them with a kinetic imager cytometers. It's a microscope that we have available in the lab that can acquire high speed and high resolutions movies from what the cells are doing in real time. 
um, very functionalized uh, the arrhythmic phenotype. We can uh, process these um, these movies with a software that is available from Bala Science to be able to um, um, have uh, the data of the calcium handling as well as the action potential. However, we analyze the contractile dysfunction with a hum, um, homemade, a custom-made uh, software developed by a former postdoc in the lab, Dr. Ricardo Serrano, wh which one can uh, process these movies by analyzing the pixel, the for a pixel movement and cellular deformation. From these movies, we can have the contractile traces, as you can see in this video. Therefore, with this tool, we can identify the control dysfunction as well as the rhythmic phenotype. Respect on how we evaluate the vascular dysfunction in a dish is I usually use primary endothelial cells uh, provenient from healthy donors. I plate those cells in a 96-fold plate with the same idea of able to um, evaluate multiple drugs and multiple cell lines at the same time. I plate these cells in a, in a gel substrate and um, um, study the capillary-like formation and cell migration. We image the cells with the same type of microscope as I previously mentioned, and the main readout that I usually analyze is the number of formed loops, as you can see in 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 this um, in this picture here. Regarding the anti-cancer effect, uh, how we evaluate anti-cancer effect in vitro is um, I use, at the time of I uh, work for a specific drug for a specific cancer, I will use the cells derived from that type of cancer, and I will plate those cells again in a 3D forward plate format to, with the same idea to simultaneously address different drugs, multiple doses, as well as cell lines. Um, I use um, fluorescent uh, assay, uh, viable for, um, suitable for plate readers, and uh, I evaluate um, the viability, the relative vi viability of the cells, as well as the growth inhibition and the proliferation of the cells. Um, in the um, in the next slides, I will show you how we use this pipeline to be in 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 the drug development, uh, especially in the example that we used to re-engineer one of the uh, toxic drugs, cardiac toxic drugs, tyrosine kinase inhibitor ponatinib. Uh, we it is very well known that tyrosine kinase inhibitors um, dramatically improve the survivorship of chronic myeloid leukemia patients. However, the toxicity of these compounds uh, impair the life quality and survivorship of these patients. Um, chronic myeloleukemia is, uh, is the third most common myeloproliferative disease in adults, which is caused by Philadelphia chromosome and the uh, expression of the oncoprotein uh, tyrosine uh, kinase PCR able. Um, patients treated with the first generation of the tyrosine kinase inhibitor azimatinib responded very well to the treatment. However, at least one third of these patients start to develop severe drug resistance. And at least 20% of them were due to a, a, a specific mutation, drug resistant mutation in BCR able that only responded to ponatinib. And it is very well known that ponatinib was, it was one of the most uh, toxic cardiovascular drugs as it generated 35% of the patients will um, show some type of cardiovascular toxicity. Therefore, it is very um, important and there is a clinical need to develop novel cardiovascular safe drugs for uh, cancer patients to in improve their life quality and survivorship. Therefore, challenged by this uh, high toxicity of this drug, um, we decided to re-engineer ponatinib. And we use a fragment-based approach coming from the four compounds available in the market of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And we generate new analogs that we study further in, uh, in different stages of high-throughput screening utilizing the platform that I described before, which is included cardiomyocytes, endothelial cells, and uh, cancer cells specific with the mutation that is resistant to the drug. Um, from those stages of the high throughput in vitro studies, we selected uh, finally two new analogs that were um, 
less cardiovascular toxic for the cells and very good to kill the mutant form of CML. Those compounds, we move them forward for the uh, in vivo assays and vivo studies in, in mice, in CML models and a lot of mice with tumor growth inhibition and of course animal survival and, and cardiovascular function. In regarding the um, the, the anti-cancer effect in vitro, you can see in the top plots that we have uh, plots for uh, the relative viability of the cancer cells with wild type, as well as the CML uh, cancer cells with the mutant form. And uh, I use ponatinib as a positive control and nilotinib as a negative control as the CML mutant form doesn't respond to nilotinib. Therefore, we can see here that our two analogs, 36 a and 33A were a very good similar to ponatinib of killing the cancer cells with and without the mutation. However, they also, as you can see here, they were, a little, uh, they were less potent. Um, in this slide, I will show what we've done for the evaluation of the cardiovascular safety of these drugs. And here, I will just focus in one of the in one of the best candidates, which is the compound 33A uh, that present the the best uh, cardiovascular safe profile. Uh, having in mind that this drug was less potent than ponatinib, so it was very necessary to think about using and evaluating those doses that they were um, equal that for the doses that ponatinib has to kill the CML in vitro, as well as inhibiting bcr able mutant form in the kinase activity in in vitro assays. Therefore, we use those, those doses and we went further away in a very, very high doses to evaluate and challenge more the system. And as you can see in the top part of the slide, we have the vasculogenesis assay, and in the bottom one is the cardio, uh, cardio, uh, cardio excuse me, cardio, a cardiac function assay. We can see here that using those dose ranges compared to ponatinib, in the vascular assay, these drugs show more than 100, 100, more than 100 times more safer profile that ponatinib. And here, in respecting the contractile function, we also see that these drugs never reach a toxic dose and show more than 60 times safer profile than ponatinib. We also uh, identify that this drug didn't increase the troponin levels in the supernatant of the cardiomyocytes treated with, uh, with this compound. As, uh, as you can see, it, it, it was released with ponatinib. And also, we show that this Compound was had a very good anti-cancer effect on in vivo studies with decreasing the tumor size, as you can see here. The, two, the, the compound plus ponatinib they, they decrease in similar way the cancer the cancer's um, size of the tumor, as well as they preserve the contractile function, the cardiac safety, uh, the cardiac safety of uh, in the mice by not elevating the troponin I serum levels. In mice. Uh, to understand better the toxicity of ponatinib, what we've done is um, 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 evaluate the full kinome profile of both compounds. And uh, we could see that ponatinib has a set of kinases that are only inhibited by ponatinib, but, by, but not by the other uh, compounds. And this data was very interesting and challenging to understand. So what I've done is I perform an sRNA um, assay or technique in cardiomyocytes and then regulate the, each of these kinases individually in cardiomyocytes as well as in the cancer cells in the mutant form and evaluate again the contractile function and the anti-cancer effect. And you can see here that all of the kinases decrease, some of them significantly the contractile function of the cardiomyocytes, but they were not necessary to, um, to give any anti-cancer effect when we compare with the inhibition of ABL. We also identified that TAC1 and SLK were new novel toxic targets that were never associated before uh, with ponatinib. 
so in 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 summary of this we can see that this platform is very useful to evaluate the cardiovascular toxicity of of uh, cancer drugs as well as it's very good to identify novel toxic targets uh, the next logical question will be if we can identify a new toxic targets could we also identify new protective targets against this toxicity? And if so, if it's possible to develop cardioprotective therapies to prevent and revert the toxicity of the cancer drugs. With this in mind, I, I um, uh, generate uh, another assay, which was an SRNA uh, screening with multiple genes in in the simultaneous um, treatment with ponatinib, it increases doses of this compound. And I evaluate again the, the functionality of the cells using the same approach that I, I, I described before. And you can see in this uh, here in this heat map is a dose uh, escalated dose response of ponatinib, and uh, for this presentation there is selected three best genes that show the protective effects on contractile function in higher doses of ponatinib. As we can see here in this plot, that cells treated co-treated with the inhibition of the skinases plus the ponatinib treatment did increase in higher doses of. of of the contractility, fun oh, sorry, the contractility function of the cardiomyocytes. However, they were they didn't produce any effect, positive or negative, when inhibited in at baseline in cardiomyocytes. Therefore, these um, these results were very interesting to understand if they were very specific only for the tyrosine kinase inhibitors or even for ponatinib. And for that in mind, what I've done is actually challenge a little bit the system, and I treat with a completely different drugs, these cells, which is with doxorubicin, which is a very well-known cardiotoxic drug in the market. And again, I produce the same type of assay. I, um, I treat the cardiomyocytes with doxorubicin in escalating doses with the simultaneous inhibition of the same three genes that in the slide before. And you can see here, again, in the highest doses, these compounds do revert the cardiovascular deficiency that only the cells treated with doxorubicin present, as you can see here in the percentage of change of increasing contractility. And therefore, I would like to conclude my presentation by highlighting again that IPS cardiomyocytes are a powerful tool to define and remove the cardiotoxic liabilities of any cancer drug before they reach to patients. That is very important to use multicellular lineages to determine the drug safety, as well as the described drug screen platform could be used to actually re-engineer any other drug to minimize the toxic effects. And as well, that there is future research effort to understand better uh, the protection of um, novel, uh, novel targets and against the cardiovascular toxic effect. And with this, I would like to conclude to thank the audience for your attention, as well as Dr. Mercola Lab, uh, Mark, who is my mentor, my colleagues in the lab, as well as the chemistry group from Malotra Lab, and my other mentors and collaborators, Dr. Coupe, uh, Moslehi, and Majeti. Thank you. Questions for Dr. Natuk? Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Wonderful talk. Thank so, you. Uh, I'm curious about the compound 30, 33A, which you're mentioning over here. So, like, uh, if you'll go with the ponetinib, so it is very well known TKI, tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And the very well known mechanism is the inhibition of angiogenesis. Correct. And once you'll go with your compound 33A, you have, uh, you have shown a very nice reduction in tumor size, but there is no effect on angiogenic parameters. Like, so what do you think, like, what is the mechanism behind this drug, how this drug is acting, and how this tumor reduction is happening in these mice? Uh, there, there is no angiogenic effect um, with this compound, you say? So, if you look, uh, look upon the picture, like, there is no inhibition of angiogenic activity. With the new compound? Yeah. Exactly. So that is exactly what we were looking for. Uh, they, they, right now we are uh, trying to identify what those targets that actually are not 
to identify the main targets of why ponadinib does that inhibition in vessels, but the new company not. Uh, we still uh, we still didn't understand fully that system. So the mechanism is still unexplored. it's still unknown with this company. Yes. Okay. And is there any kind of uh, benefits you are getting in terms of dosage and frequency of uh, dose administration in these mice to reduce the tumor size as compared to ponetinib? Like how? Like, is it a regular doses you have to do with 33? So the, uh, yes, uh, the, regarding the mice studies, the how the experiment was done is the the animals were treated uh, every 24 hours, equally with the with ponatinib or with the novel compound and the same doses. So as we know that the the other one was not as potent. However, we still use the same dose that is known to to decrease the tumor size with ponatinib, and we use the same dose of the other compound. Uh, there was not need at that point to uh, re, uh, refeed the mice with this drug. This, uh, this study was done up to a month of treatment, if that answers your question. So did you observe any side effects with this? Uh, side no effects? Uh, we so far didn't see any side effects in the mice. The survival was um, equal as um, the survival was very good. No mice died uh, with this uh, compound. We had I don't show this data here. It's actually in the um, in the publication. <laughs> Um, there was a couple of mice that they died due to ponatinib during the first stages. However, we also needed to terminate the experiment because of the control group. It was not ethically correct to continue with that because, as you can see, the size of the tumor was really, really big. And we needed to terminate the experiment, uh, the study before that. The side effects we, we didn't see, as, as your question, we didn't see any side effects so far compared to what we've seen of cachectic mice in control or um, dysfunction in cardiovascular system of with ponadinib. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your questions. Thanks. Two questions here. Hey, Anna, very great presentation. Um, well, I have two questions for you. The first question, uh, based on your SRNA screening, it's kind of surprising to me that you identify the gene 3 perturbation of gene 3 was able to show um, protective effect against both um, ponatinib and uh, doxorubicin induced uh, cardiotoxicity in IPS-20 cardiomyocytes. Is it because this gene target the same like pathway, like like calcium handling or something, make it work? So yeah, I um, regarding the pathway, the only thing that I can say uh, for now is that they trigger different pathways. So it's completely different things, three different not related pathways. Uh, however, I cannot disclose more than that for now. Okay. And, and my second question is, uh, since your uh, screening is done using uh, panetonib, uh, does it work by perturbation of either of the three candidate genes? Were they able to rescue like a sunetonib induced uh, cardiac? Toxicity. So I did try with osimertinib. Okay. Uh, I didn't present it here, uh, but yes, the other kinase inhibitor that one of them that it was uh, studied was osimertinib, and uh, present similar effect, but yeah, similar effect that in what I've seen in, with ponatinib. And another follow-up question. Uh, so for your sRNA uh, library, uh, how big is your library when you? Perform the screen. So uh, that is it. That is a very good question. Uh, it's it was a very broad library. I would say more than in the first stage, more than 400 uh, genes. Uh, that I hope I will release really soon in, a, <laughs> in my next uh, uh, presentation. <laughs> so what the rough uh, knockdown efficiency across the the all the uh, SRNA you you used. Uh, yeah, so we, we cannot expect a high inhibition of any SRNA, right? So the, the lowest, the, the strongest one we can expect is the 50%. Um, and it was similar to that. That's what we are informed. Yeah. Is there one more question? Yeah, just... Thank you. Uh, really great talk. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I wanted to make a comment to the, one of the questions I was asked. Penaphenep's anti-cancer with 
effects are probably distinct from the anti-estrogenic effects. That's why it's not used for kidney cancer. In fact, the company that originally made Panafinet, the VEGF inhibition was completely a surprise that occurred later after they realized there is uh, uh, the toxicity to the FDA can be in release of the drug from the market. And so I think, uh, I, I think uh, that and that's why you specifically use it for ECRA one mutant cancers, which is mostly CML and ALL. Um, so just a quick comment. The question I have for you, and I think you answered it, I really think the last part is really nice and a really Thank nice you. way to go about your uh, 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 looking for these cardio-protecting drugs. Uh, obviously, with the, any new technology, there's a question of does it really work? That Absolutely. The Zubison example is probably a good one. I think you may have answered that you can't share what the drugs are doing. <laughs> Regrettably, not yet. Positive <laughs> false, because doxorubicin has been studied to death since probably 1980. Yeah. In uh, everyone's lab at some juncture. So are there positive controls that pop up that say, well, we're on the right track? <laughs> So regarding uh, absolutely. So the, actually, the, the, this uh, this assay was based mostly in functional assay. It was not. I, I'm still um, as this is in development. I'm still looking for what these targets do, do specifically, as well as if there is anything related to the specific drug in 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 in, in effect. However, this was done only for the um, functional. Say, and as you can see here, the contractility did improve, did um, show that contractile defect, and also like in this dose, I I went further away uh, in dose range, and actually I test up to 25 micromolar, which of course, as you can imagine, that the cells were like in the stage of being not even functional; they were almost going to in the apoptotic uh, pathway. So that's how I discarded for the presentation right now that block that it will be completely blue. So the positive control that the cells die and they don't contract. We've seen that with um, and uh, but not the specific genes that affect the doxorubicin. Okay, thanks, Dr. Thank Nath. you.